Hey everybody, this is Randy. How you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty good myself. You know, I was out walking around, and I figured I, I better get a video up. I told you guys I was going to do a series. And the first video I'm going to do it on is where to pan, where to uh, God, I can't talk today. Where to park? A lot of people ask me, hey, where can I park if I'm driving from Delaware to Arizona? You see things like that all the time on Facebook. Is there any good places to camp? I'm going to tell you a few of them. So you guys come back. And we'll talk about it. You know we got to throw the intro in there. Alright, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. You know, a lot of people ask me, when I'm on the road, where's a good place to go to, to, to stay the night? Where's a good place to camp? Well, I'm going to give you five places, different areas where you can camp at, where you can stay for up to two weeks. And you know what? We're going to start with we're going to start with your one-nighters while you're traveling, getting from point A to point B. We all know that most of the Walmarts allow you to stay in their parking lot. Me, myself, I don't like to stay in Walmarts, but if I'm going to do a little shopping, I'll stay the night sometimes. There's other places like, uh, I'm going to look at my paper. Uh, you got Home Depots allow you to stay there. Some Lowe's allow you to stay there. And then you have your sportsman stores. Uh, Cabela's in South Dakota is one of them. Sportsman's Warehouse is another. They cater to, you know, campers. They cater to travelers' needs. Right now, I'm in a national forest. And we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. <laughs> Next thing we're going to talk about is your internet sites where you can go. Uh, I'm going to give you the top six that I like. And the first one is, and in, not in any specific order, iOverlander. iOverlander is a app. These are all apps you can get. It's iOverlander.com. And they cater to overlanding. Then you got a place called Allstays. That's A L L S T A Y S. Allstays.com. You've got RV Parky. That's R V P A R K Y. And there's another app called Free Roam. One called Camp Pandium. And the other one is called, the one that I like to use, is FreeCampsites.net. Hang on a minute. We're going to come back and talk about that in depth. Okay. I had to talk to somebody, so I had to cut you off for a minute. All right. So, I was talking about freecampsites.net. I love this site. I got it on my telephone. And all I do is I put in an area that I'm at, and I push go. Next thing you know, it's got all these sites that pop up. Uh, paid sites pop up. Even the, the free sites. Everything pops up. Now, if you stay at a place, you can add that to freecampsite.net if it isn't already on there. You can also add reviews. They have uh, what your phone service is like. They have whether there's any anemones there. I love that site, freecampsite.net. Can't talk enough about it. Okay, now, we've talked about your one-nighters, your retail stores. We talked about the applications. Now, we're going to talk about local parks, city parks. When you're traveling down the road and you come into a nice little area, I know Nebraska has a lot of these, and so does South Dakota. When I go back home, I stay at two city parks. Uh, rotate back and forth between them. They're not free, 
Now, some places are free. Some places in Nebraska that you stay are donations. Uh, some might have a suggested donation. And if they do, if it's nice, I, I give it to them. I know that we traveled through Nebraska oh, about six weeks staying at these sites. Nice little city parks. Uh, and if you're not sure if you can spend a night in one of these parks, just go down to your local uh, chamber of commerce or, or go talk to a police officer. They'll tell you whether you can stay there or not. All right, now we're going to talk about your national parks. I'm in a national park right now. Uh, it's a forest, like I said, the upper desert. National parks are great. You get to see, there is, what is there? I believe there's 63 national parks throughout the U.S. Uh, some beautiful land. Of course, you know Yellowstone, the Grand Teton, Black Hills of South Dakota. Uh, these are all national parks. Uh, yeah, actuality, they're, they're in the territories also. They're all the way down in Puerto Rico. I believe they even have one or two national parks. But they're nice little places to stay. I know up at the Grand Canyon National Park, you can stay right outside the Grand Canyon's entrance. Um, now, some of these places, you have to get a pass. Now, it's called America the Beautiful Pass. And we're going to get a little bit more in depth into that into another video. But let me give you the skinny on it. Uh, America the Beautiful Pass allows you to get into the park. And I believe the cost for that is $80 annually. Uh, you can get, if you're a senior, it's $80 for a lifetime pass or $20 annually. And if you're disabled, it's free. Uh, you buy the pass, you got to give them a $10 fee but other than that the pass itself is free uh, and then of course you have if you got campgrounds in the national park there's a fee to stay at them don't know exactly what they are I'll do a little research and we'll hit a little bit more on that in a little bit different video now the next place is BLM land now BLM land that's public land and it's overseen by the Bureau of Land Management, the government. Even though it's public land, it's got to be overseen by somebody. Uh, a lot of BLM land I stay at, <laughs> either BLM National Forest, you know, when I'm out and about. Uh, in the wintertime, there's a thing called uh, the LTVAs, that's Long Term Visitors Centers. They're BLM land. And there's fee for that. It's $180 for the year. Actually, it's for seven months. Or it's $40 for every two weeks. That's where I was the whole winter. I was down there on the LTVA sites, down at Quartzsite. And I believe there's seven or eight of them throughout Arizona and California. Now... this video here like I said I'm gonna go more into depth on a few of these subjects but this just eases people's mind a little bit to know that you can be driving down the road you can see a national park or heck up in South Dakota they got national what they call national grasslands same thing you can stay at a national grassland uh, right outside a wall drug there's a place beautiful place Wall, South Dakota if y'all don't know where Wall Drug is and it's overlooking the Badlands I mean you're camping right up on top of the mountain or the hill whatever you want to call it the Badlands is right below you beautiful sight to wake up to or to go to bed at night uh, let's see if I haven't touched on anything oh yeah see I got notes I think I touched base on everything here uh, like I say, the local parks, if it's not shown that you can stay there, get permission first. 
make sure if you stop at a Walmart or a Lowe's, Home Depot, something like that, get permission first. Sportsman's Warehouse, get permission first. That's all I can say, get permission. You don't want to just squat somewhere and then get that proverbial knock on the door at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, what are you doing? Well, anyway, I'm going to be using it here, that free campsite, because I'm going to start traveling back home. Another week or two, I'll be traveling, making my way back to South Dakota. Got to see the kids and the grandkids. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me today. Stay tuned, you never know what's next. Remember, travel on, drive safe, and don't take any wooden nickels. Later, guys.